So let's talk about the exemplars of the Astartes, Masters in Close Combat and Rights of Command. Today we're talking through every single Space Marine Captain that the Space Marines can field. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines once more, and in this video we're talking Captains. As I've done with many of the other classes of HQ, the Chaplains, Lieutenants and Librarians, I thought we'd go through each and every Captain available to the Space Marines, both the generic ones and all the unique ones, and talk about what they do in-game. In Warhammer 40k, the Space Marine chapters traditionally have 10 Captains within them, each of them head of a company, whether it's the Veteran First Company, the Battle Companies, or the Scout Company, and they each bring their own fighting style and particular melee prowess to the table, shaping their company and their Marines' tactics in their own image. In battle, these guys really are masters of war. A standard Space Marine is an exemplary soldier, and a captain is many levels above that, veterans of countless battlefields and perfection in their way of fighting. In combat they get access to the greatest relic weapons that the chapter has to offer, and fight with an iron halo as their badge of office, which also contains a powerful force shield to protect them from harm. In game, in 10th edition, a lot of them have their own special rules to reflect their own way of fighting, though most of the generic captains offer you free battle tactic stratagems, perhaps meaning that they're a little bit situational depending on which detachment that you're playing with, or exactly what squad they're leading and whether or not they can use the battle tactic stratagems that you have available. Compared with the other ranks of HQ units for the Space Marines, they do also have very good melee stats as well. They get their 4 plus invulnerable save from the Iron Halo, and then typically get to carry power fists or mastercrafted power swords into battle, hitting on twos with a lot of attacks, and outfighting the other ranks of Space Marine character in hand-to-hand -hand combat. For this video, I thought we'd go through each captain with their current Warhammer 40k rules, talk about exactly what they do in game and what they offer to their squads, and just give them a very rough and arbitrary star rating out of 5 for how strong I'd rate them at the moment when weighed up against their peers. There really are quite a lot of Space Marine captains out there. For the purposes of this video, I thought I'd go through the Space Marine datasheets that have either captain in the name or have it listed on their datasheet, rather than doing any other near equivalent ranks, but it still definitely gives us more than enough to talk about. Jumping straight into it though, and let's start with the generic captains first, then talk through named characters and things that are chapter locked. This is the data sheet for the standard Space Marine Captain now, 80 points to field in game, and for that you get a 5 wound character with his 4 plus invulnerable save, and quite a good choice of war gear, likely the power fist would be the first preferred loadout unless you are leading certain units. 5 attacks at strength 8 and damage 2 is good solid melee to add to most squads, and you can back that up with a fancy pistol or bolt rifle of some sort. As with the other more generic captains, he provides a free battle tactic stratagem per battle round, so it could be things like a command point reroll to reroll a charge or a save or something, but it's generally going to be quite detachment dependent, say for example Gladius using Storm of Fire or Armour of Contempt, or perhaps the devastating wound torrent worn in Firestorm for the Infernus squad. As the standard Tacticus armoured captain, he's got really quite a good choice of squads that he can lead, Perhaps first and foremost might be the Blade Guard veterans, given that he combos quite well with them wanting to be in melee. They could be used to get free battle tactic stratagems for any of these other units as well. Some of them might make sense depending on the detachment. His own unique special rule is Finest Hour. Once per battle, he gets to add plus three to his attack characteristic, and they gain devastating wounds for that turn. That does mean that he lands his blows with a seriously big punch just once every battle. 8 attacks at strength 8, AB2 and damage 2 with devastating wounds is a pretty brutal profile to contend with. Overall, the standard captain feels like kind of the default here really. I think he's okay for his points cost, though in any given chapter there's likely to be stiff competition for his role. I feel like adding a lieutenant to a unit might often be the easier place to go first, given that they add reliable extra damage output with their lethal hits, it more depends if you want the captain for the free battle tactic stratagems, which is very detachment dependent. As mentioned, I feel like Blade Guard are the best overall fit. If you had a detachment that needed battle tactic stratagems happening there, then they seem reasonable enough. Overall, I've chosen to rank him a 4 out of 5. I think he's fairly good value for his points. Next up, for his counterpart in Gravis armor, he is also 80 points and comes with some slightly beefier stats. He can either have the heavy bolt rifle version or the more standard Gravis captain version. Again, I'd probably go for the Gravis Captain 1 myself, given that you can get 6 Power Fist attacks with that if you'd like, or 5 Power Fist plus a couple of Relic Blade attacks. 
He really is quite tanky with six wounds at toughness six and the inbuilt ability to halve damage characteristics against him. It does mean that if he is less till last, he'll be hard to take down and could be quite a nice choice for certain durability enhancements. Again, I'd probably rate the Grouse Captain as kind of similar to the regular one, offers some fairly similar things, but trades off that big one-time melee punch for better durability. Out of the squads that he can lead, I think he's the most relevant in leading the aggressors, which tend to be a good focal damage dealer unit for the Space Marines. Could be good in Gladius alongside an Apothecary Biologist to do the whole Fire Discipline combo thing, or maybe in Firestorm to give Devastating Wound Torrent weapons to Flamestorm aggressors. I've chosen to rank him a 4 out of 5. Next up, we've got the very sneaky captain in Phobos armor. He has a similar sort of stat line, but of course the Phobos keyword, and I'd argue doesn't really quite as get anywhere near as threatening war gear as the previous two captains, getting a single shot with an instigator bolt carbine with a chance to snipe someone for two damage, and then in combat having to rely just on a combat knife, six attacks at strength four and AP zero damage one. He can join any of the Phobos armored units or the scout squad, I'd say that by far the biggest reason to take him is his ability Master of Deceit. After both players have been set up and first turn has been determined, he gets to redeploy three friendly Phobos or Scout Squad units, which given Games Workshop's recent clarification as to how that interact with infiltrators can be quite big, means that you could have units set up very aggressively indeed if you went first, and then just pull them back and redeploy them somewhere in the midfield if you weren't. Overall, I feel like it's an interesting mixed bag, really. That redeploy rule for things in the midfield is rather godly. Could potentially put your Phobos or Scout units in a really good position to do some annoying first turn damage or move blocks, or just keep them super safe if you go second. Beyond that, though, he just doesn't really do all that much, personally. I guess he could be handy enough to bear enhancements, though most of the time the squads that he's leading won't be too excited about getting free battle tactic stratagems. Most of them don't tend to be particularly excessive damage dealers. A Roy's kind of rare sight on the tabletop in competitive armies. I've chosen to rate him a 3 out of 5. Definitely not useless though. Next up, we've got the Captain with the Jump Pack for 85 points. He has a similar stat line to the Captain in Tacticus armor on foot, but comes with Fly and a 12 inch move. And he can lead either Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs or the Vanguard Veterans. In melee, again, probably a Power Fist might be the best bet here, though he can trade out his loadout. For a classic Smash Captain Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. Besides the free battle tactics that he gets, he also gets plus one strength on the charge for his lead unit. Could be kind of useful against some targets if you're hitting at strength four. Boosting up to strength five is rather nice. Overall, despite his new and shiny model, the Jump Captain does seem to be a kind of rare sight in competitive lists as well. It does require you building around Jump Intercessors or Vanguard Veterans as primary damage dealers. And the general thinking seems to be that if you're using jump intercessors, you might be better off just using them as smaller squads for objective skirmishing or secondary type things, as opposed to trying to hang your core damage output of your army around them. With their damage output, unless they get the charge and get literally all of them into combat for their mortal wounds, they might just have trouble punching up against tougher targets, even with the captain's help. Overall, as a result, I've chosen to give him a 2.5 out of 5 here. I think it'd be a lot more tempting if Vanguard veterans were just better general purpose damage dealers and more capable of taking down hard targets. Next up, we've got the Captain and Terminator armor, 95 points, and can lead either the Terminator squad or the Terminator assault squad, likely armed with a power fist full of strength 8 once more, plus the combi weapon or storm bolter. It's really quite tough as a Terminator with big 6 wounds at toughness 5, as well as his free stratagems from Rites of Battle, he also gets the Imperium sword allowing you to re-roll charge rolls for the model's units, kind of potentially handy if you have terminators trying to make a charge out of deep strike there. Overall, his value again is kind of tied to the terminator units. It seems that most competitive armies aren't really building around them as their primary damage dealers as well, which maybe does limit his functionality a little bit. Could be kind of interesting with the new Dark Angels detachment though, once we get the full release and points for the Dark Angels codex, could be interesting to see how he stacks up alongside new style Deathwing Terminators. Overall, I've chosen to give him a 3.5 out of 5, a little bit more expensive. Feels perhaps just a little bit like the Terminators that he'd be leading, a bit middle of the road for the Space Marines right now, not terrible, but also not super duper standout. Moving into the more Codex special characters now, and first up we have Captain Cato Sicarius himself. He gets a few upgrades on the standard Tacticus Captain in a 2 plus armor save. 
a fancy plasma pistol and lethal hits on his Talisarian Tempest Blade. Then beyond that he gives quite a lot of movement type buffs to the squad that is leading, the scout 6 inches keyword, the assault keyword for guns and a once per game reactive move where if the enemy moves within 9 inches of you then his squad can move 6 inches. I say perhaps the main issue with Kato Sicarius is that the buffs that he offers are maybe just a little bit unfocused and there could be some games that his movement tricks just don't really add much to proceedings whatsoever, as opposed to say a bit more of a reliable damage output boost to his unit. I guess you could get a squad of blade guard or stern guard into the midfield, and then have that potentially disruptive reactive move on hand, but I feel like most people don't really see that is all that much good value for 85 points for that, not compared with the more reliable things that other characters could bring. Overall I've chosen to rate him 1.5 out of 5. His brother in arms in the Ultramarines captains is Uriel Ventris. His melee gets 6 attacks at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 2, this time with sustained hits. He has a slightly fancy relic bolter in Invictus, and his two special rules are to allow stratagems when battle shocked, but more importantly pick one Astartes infantry unit in your army and give it a deep strike special rule. Between those two for the 75 points, it's the deep strike special rule that seems to get him included in certain armies. It does just have really quite a lot of value just by itself. You could have a unit of eradicators pop up within range of exactly what they need to and not have to cling to the board edges. It could lead to on the board melee units doing interesting rapid ingress things, maybe things like assault centurions. We could use it to deliver big combos of shooting like the fire discipline combo. You could deep strike some aggressors with that. His most notorious way of being run though is in the Vanguard Spearhead where he can give the deep strike keywords to some Devastator Centurions and then they can use the Vanguard Spearhead stratagem to repeatedly redeploy them via deep strike. Goron turrets that warp around the table when they need to to get line of sight on exactly what they want to destroy. Beyond that he can just be a fighty character to lead some company heroes or assault intercessors or something and just make the best out of his fancy power sword. Overall I'd rate him around a 4 out of 5 normally, probably going out to the full 5 out of 5 if he's included in Vanguard Spearhead alongside some good deep striking infantry. For the Imperial Fist, captain of the first company, we have Dynath Lysander, a monstrously resilient Terminator opponent with a massive Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. The Fist of Dawn strikes at 5 attacks at strength 10 and damage 3 with devastating wounds. And once per game his shield can give him a flare of remarkable survivability, getting a 2 plus invulnerable save for one phase. His buffing rule for the terminators doesn't give them any free stratagems, but it means that they're minus 1 to wound if the strength of an attack is greater than their toughness, so quite a lot more resilient against the things that are likely to kill them best. Overall I'd rate him as pretty fairly costed for what he brings to the table. Tougher terminators and a melee profile that feels fitting for 100 points, I've chosen to rate him a 3.5 out of 5. Otherwise for the Imperial Fists we have Tor Garadon, a Gravis Captain armed with a Grav Gun and the Mighty Hand of Defiance, a big Strength 12, AP 2 and Damage 2 Power Fist that goes all the way up to Strength 14, AP 4 and Damage 4 if he happens to be fighting a monster vehicle or fortification. Otherwise he leads his squad with Ignore's Cover, and his Grav Gun can also punch up massively against vehicles as well, getting those same boosts but at range. Overall, I feel like that big vehicle damage boost really is kind of interesting, though besides that he just doesn't really add too much to his squad, ignores cover isn't awful, but maybe it isn't really enough of a buffing rule to be exciting all by itself. Certainly feels like a model that's going to be way more valuable if you happen to be fighting an enemy with loads of monsters and vehicles like an Imperial Knight list, though if you're not, you're going to be far better with something like a standard Gravis Captain I'd say. Overall, I've chosen to rank him a 3 out of 5, he certainly feels a lot less standout than when he had lethal hits as his boosting rule. Next up we have the mighty salamander that is Adrax Agaton. He's a fairly cheap Tacticus Armoured Captain at 85 points and he comes with some massive melee. 5 attacks at strength 10, AP 2 and damage 3 with Malleus Noctum plus a fairly punchy hand flamer. And his rules reduce the objective control of units that he's in melee with and more importantly gives you re-roll the wound rolls in melee for the unit that he's leading. I feel like for the Salamanders, Ajax Agaton is just quite simple and effective, really quite strong with Blade Guard with those re-roll wound rolls between their attacks and his big strength 10 damage 3 ones, they're going to be threatening to most things in the game. Seems hard to go too far wrong with him and a squad of 6 Blade Guard jumping out of a Lamb Raider, they are going to reliably break things. Overall I've chosen to rate him a 4.5 out of 5, 
I think he's fairly standout with his own damage and a really good melee boosting rule. Next up we've got Vulcan Hestarn, 100 points for a firstborn captain. The Forge Father of the Salamanders also gets a 2 plus save like Ajax does as well. Comes with an even punchier flamer with the Gauntlet of the Forge with d6 plus 3, strength 6 attacks at AP1. Though not quite a savage melee with a spear of Vulcan with a more standard captain sort of profile. Both of his special rules I think are quite good. He gets to nominate an objective to be objective control 10 on with a 4 plus feel no pain. So really quite hard to take that objective off him once he stands there. And then maybe more importantly his Forge Father special rule is really quite interesting. Nominating one enemy unit for destruction within 24 inches. And any torrent or melter weapons gets to re-roll the wound roll against that target. I feel like it's the sort of character that you do need to build around. Obviously it's going to depend on whether he's got relevant units to buff. Inferno squads or the Land Raider Edema being maybe the most interesting. Both of those could be seriously nicer with re-roll wound rolls. That's even more so in the Firestorm Assault Force where you could trigger that devastating wound stratagem. And if you re-roll everything but those sixes, you could potentially get some very nasty damage through. Plus, it's definitely handy to have on objectives. He could be in a squad of company heroes, putting objective control 10 on a midfield point, while handing that buff out to the thing that most needs burning to death. Overall, I think he's pretty solid, though it does come at a points premium at 100 points now. I've chosen to rate him a 4 out of 5. Next up, we have the Great Hunter of the White Scars, Corsaro Khan. 70 points for a Tacticus Armoured Captain. He strikes in combat at strength 5 and damage 2. They get precision, devastating wounds and likely lance melee on the charge provided he's leading a unit, which he also confers to the squad that he's in. With a lance boost, he's probably most likely relevant for blade guard more so than other things again, though I guess he wouldn't be awful with assault intercessors either. Overall for 70 points, I do think he's fairly good value. That lance melee is a big boost again for things like blade guards that want to be wounding things better. I feel that maybe doesn't hold up too well if you directly compare to things like Adrax despite the points differential. Not hitting quite as crazily hard and his buff is only good for the turn that you charge as opposed to all the time. Still though I think his soul is enough and very playable at 70 points. I've chosen to rate him a 3.5 here. Could have been persuaded to push it up to a 4 maybe. Next up and moving into the more divergent chapters now we have Master Lazarus of the Dark Angels. He is a Tacticus Armoured Captain again. Fighting with Emnity's Edge, a standard power sword with AP3 and anti psyker 2 plus. His special rules are to give the squad a 3 plus feel no pain against psychic attacks and mortal wounds and give you fights on death on a 4 plus for his lead unit. Overall, I must admit, I'm maybe not really the most convinced by Lazarus. The feel no pain is excellent against certain things that might target his squad, but it is kind of matchup dependent, and if you're not facing lots of psychers or loads of mortal wounds out there, it's just not quite as relevant, particularly now devastating wounds aren't mortal wounds anymore. His value went down a lot, it was maybe just a little bit situational to start with. The fights in death thing isn't nothing though I suppose, and if you do happen to be matched up against psychers, he'll do well. I've chosen to rate him a one and a half stars out of five. I guess that would go up considerably though if you did absolutely know that you were playing a psychic heavy army. Next up there's Master Belial of the Deathwing. He's a 6 wound terminator captain who fights with a mastercrafted storm bolter and the sword of silence. A fairly standard relic weapon sort of profile but getting precision and his special rules are to give precision hits to his unit whenever you hit on a 6 and strikes of retribution whenever he takes damage giving a good chance of bouncing back some mortal wounds when he personally is attacked in melee. Again for Belial, kind of as with Lazarus, my main criticism would be that the precision attacks are sometimes big, but lots of times just won't really matter at all. You're sort of hoping that you're going to be fighting against a big durable enemy unit where you can't wipe them all with a big Terminator squad, but you can do enough damage to wipe the character. Occasionally it would happen, though I feel like it would be in a small minority of games. Otherwise, if you're not getting good value out of precision, you're probably better with one of the other Terminator characters or bringing their own interesting things such as plus one to wound for the chaplain. I've chosen to rate him a 2 out of 5 here. I feel like he might need to be a bit cheaper than the other good support options to be a bit more tempting. Otherwise, for the Dark Angels, we have the Grandmaster of the Second Company in Samael. He's 130 points and rides his relic jet bike into battle. Toughness 5, 7 wounds and comes with an underslung mastercrafted plasma cannon. He strikes with a raven sword in melee. An AP3 relic weapon profile with sustained hits too. 
his booster to be able to shoot and charge after you've advanced and also a cut off the escape special rule to make the enemy have to test desperate escape when they're falling back. Both of those potentially helpful I guess though the advance and do things one might overlap a bit with certain detachment rules maybe Stormlands or the Ravenwing unique company of hunters. I feel like Samael's perhaps in a bit of a weird place, halfway between the Dark Angels' new rules coming out but not knowing the new points and things yet. I guess kind of interesting for Black Knights at the moment, though after the new Dark Angels' rules do properly come into force, unless something really quite major changes on the points front, I can't help but think that people are going to be far more drawn to running the Ravenwing Command Squad to lead their Black Knights and Outriders. They just seem to offer more overall than Samael unless he does wind up being quite significantly cheaper in points cost than they are. Kind of a bit hard to say at the moment though, until the points come out. Just based on current points though, I would rate him as not as good as them. I've given him a 2 out of 5 here. Again, he doesn't seem to make competitive lists very often. Next up, we've got their bitter rivals in the Space Wolves, and first up there's Ragnar Blackmane. 90 points for a Tacticus armoured character that can lead a whole host of different units, including the Space Wolf unique ones. He hits with a flurry of attacks from Frostfang. On the charge, a fairly crazy 10 attacks at strength 8, AP 3 and damage 2, all with sustained hits. And he might be making charges just a little bit more easily than some. His war howl allows his units to advance and charge. Overall, he really does add some pretty significant extra melee to his units with all of those attacks. Fairly good value for 90 points, I think. Plus, the getting them there does help out. I've chosen to rank him a 4 out of 5. Could be interesting enough for some Space Wolf foot slogging infantry, maybe even jumping out of an Impulsor. Otherwise for the Space Wolves, there's Krom Dragon Gaze, 65 points for a Firstborn Wolf Lord. He can lead the Space Wolf unique units, he's only 4 wounds, and hits with Worm Claw with 6 attacks at Strength 7 and Lethal Hits. His squad buffs are 1 to give you extra damage as your squad takes damage and hands out a battle shock to an enemy infantry unit with his fierce eye. Overall though, despite being the cheapest out of any of these captains, I would rate him as probably one of the weakest really. His buffing rule being dependent on his squad having taken casualties just means it's kind of situational versus things that already have value right when you buy the character in. His melee is alright, but maybe nothing desperately stand out. Battle shock's a bit situational. I think just in general I'd be a bit more tempted by lieutenants and things over him if you wanted a squad damage boost. Otherwise the Space Wolves have a couple of Thunderwolf mounted lords as well. Harold Deathwolf is 85 points and leads Thunderwolf cavalry with his melee axe Glacius. 6 attacks at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 2. And he himself is really quite hard to kill. Toughness 6, 7 wounds and a 3 plus save from his Thunderwolf. A 4 plus save from his Storm Shield. And he also has the mantle of the Troll King, flipping an enemy damage result to zero whenever he's attacked personally once per phase. He also does make Thunderwolves just that bit more threatening, getting devastating wounds for their crushing teeth and claw attacks, definitely helping them punch up a bit. Overall that does seem to be enough to get Harold played competitively. He's fairly commonly seen leading Thunderwolf cavalry into battle, powerhouse units of their Stormlance detachments. And his own attacks can get all the way up to damage 3 on the charge with the Thunderwolves due to their squad damage boost. I've chosen to rank him a 4 out of 5, he definitely sees competitive play. Otherwise, the other Wolf Lord on the Thunderwolf is the generic one, 100 points, perhaps for a 6 or 7 wound character depending on whether you're taking the shield, and then with a Thunder Hammer or a Power Fist to back that up. He gets the free stratagem in the Thunderwolf unit, which is really quite big given that that will be affecting such a big and threatening unit often with a battle leader in tow as well, and the second one is to add plus one to advance and charge rolls for his units. Again, I feel like those are two fairly excellent boosts for a powerhouse Space Wolf unit. Plus one to advance and charge is pretty excellent for the Stormlance in particular, as that's just going to add to their charge threat range by quite a bit, given that they get to advance and charge each turn. Overall, I've chosen to raise him a four out of five, really quite a solid data sheet. Next up we've got the Grey Knights with the standard Brother Captain clocking in at 90 points. These guys fight in Terminator armour so have a profile that matches the standard Captain Terminator armour quite closely. Otherwise though he can pack a little bit of somewhat scary shooting with either a side cannon or incinerator and hits with a force weapon in melee. He grants his squad to send hits one to any psychic weapons in the unit and he personally gets to re-roll the wound roll with psychic weapons. 
helping out his own damage output at Ponchi up against tougher stuff. Overall, he definitely had some solid value to a Terminator unit, a nice effective damage boost, plus a fair bit of melee in himself. I think those main issue is that he's just competing with a lot of other very good Grey Knight data sheets for leading the Terminators and Paladins. I feel like first choice, a lot of people would probably go for Drago. Librarians with their mortal wounds are pretty handy to have after that. And there's a few other good data sheets out there like Voldus, who might also pip the Brother Captain for inclusion. I don't think he's realistically all that far behind most of those other choices though. I've chosen to rank him a 3 out of 5. As a slightly different flavour of Brother Captain to lead the Grey Knights into battle, there's Brother Captain Stern. The unique Grey Knight Captain is 90 points, can lead the same units. He loses his fancy gun and swaps out his damage output boost for getting mortal wounds on critical wounds in melee. Quite nice in that it helps the lead units punch up a bit better against things like tanks and vehicles, something that Grey Knights need a bit of help with there. Otherwise he also comes with a 2 plus chance to resurrect on death as well getting to set himself up with 6 wounds remaining again, which is quite good for him to come back for another go. Again, like the brother captain though, he's just considered a little bit on the middling side versus the competitors. There's lots of strong Grey Knight Terminator data sheets out there, and while he's not really too far behind them, he's probably not one of the most standouts. The revive on death thing I think is certainly very powerful, though those rules are always maybe a little bit questionable as they rely on the entire squad being wiped out to take effect at all so perhaps often just wind up being making the best of a bad situation. Still though, definitely usable enough, I've chosen to raise him a 3 out of 5. Next up, we've got Captain Tycho for 75 points. I'll focus on the datasheet before he fell to the Death Company on this one. He's kind of quite an interesting datasheet within the Blood Angels army as a more ranged commander. An interesting composite profile that's good against heavy infantry with Blood Song and then Dead Man's Hand in melee for a whole bunch of strength for AP 1 and damage 2 attacks, not too bad against lighter infantry or standard space marines, though leaving a bit to be desired compared with plenty of other captain peers. Otherwise, he gives his squad some interesting boosts with the option to give their guns either assault, heavy or rapid fire each turn, and if any attacks get allocated to him, then the Dead Man's Hand becomes a big 12 attack thing for the rest of the game, which is quite big. I feel like that's actually enough to turn him from being really quite bad in melee to quite good, but it does come with the downside that once he starts getting attacks, there's a good chance he might well not be surviving the phase anyway. Overall, between those special rules, he maybe doesn't really feel like the best fit for Blood Angels overall. He's not really playing into their melee synergies all that much. His weapons in general do struggle against anything that's toughness 5 or more, unless it's got the infantry keyword for Blood Song. I feel like his most powerful boost is the rapid fire boost to give to the weapons. Unfortunately, the stone guard that might want to use that already have that keyword, and tactical marines are a bit overcosted to make it relevant. Overall, just feels like a data sheet that might well do okay if he gets to skirmish against his perfect ideal targets, but if that doesn't happen, then he's going to be far less value than most captains out there. I've chosen to be a little bit harsh to him and given him a 1 out of 5. Finally, and a captain of the Force of the Death Watch, we have Watch Captain Artemis. He's 75 points and can lead either Death Watch veterans or the Proteus kill team. He fights with another fun combi weapon in Hellfire Extremis. We're getting quite a nice combi weapon torrent sort of profile, and then a Mastercrafted power weapon in melee. Again, he gets one of those Revive on Death special rules, kind of similar to Stern, though he only comes back with one wound remaining, not four wounds. And otherwise his boost for the unit is allowing you to target the unit with a stratagem even if that stratagem is being used elsewhere. So it could be an option for doubling up on one powerful stratagem in different parts of the army if you really have something that you want to spam. Unfortunately though, unless you do have just an absolute god tier stratagem that's worth buying in twice in one phase that's going to eat through your command points extra fast, that stratagem rule just really isn't adding a lot. Both of those units could be joined by a captain to get any battle tactics stratagems just for free, so it doesn't really help there either. Otherwise, between his damage and resurrection rule, they just feel a lot less use compared with plenty of other leaders that could join those units, maybe the lieutenants in particular. As a result, I feel like he's just overcosted for what he brings, really. I've again chosen to give him a slightly harsh 1 out of 5. In any case, hope you've enjoyed a quick tour through just about every captain in Warhammer 40k. Let me know your thoughts on which ones are strongest and weakest down in the comments below. I think out of all of the many many on offer, perhaps Yuri or Ventris teleporting centurions around in Ultramarines Vanguard is fairly standout. 
Ajax Agatone just for raw melee might with Blade Guard feels rather good. And maybe kind of stand out might be the Gravis Captain alongside Flamestorm Aggressors in the Firestorm Detachment. Again, getting free devastating wounds, Twin Links, Torrents does seem rather good. In any case, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And look forward to hearing any other alternative takes or any other things that I might have missed about solstices of using these guys. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well. And you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.